Hello my friends and welcome, let's go straight to Avdiivka direction where Russia tries to intensify their forces in attempt to encircle this town. So far unsuccessfully, but still they have the vector to advance towards Stepove. Many of their sources say that Russia already occupied this village, but today we have the confirmation that it is still under Ukrainian control, so let me show you some of the video. The video comes from one of the Ukrainian Telegram channels, so here you can see Bradley operating in Stepove village. This video was filmed today and clearly it is Stepove. I can already identify this village for sure just couple of the streets however there are no any buildings which survived the battle also at the very end of this video you may see bradley but also you may see the t90 russian prorif tank that was destroyed by the bradley itself i already showed you that video it is available mostly everywhere how 40 years old american infantry fighting vehicle banks russian tank definitely a unique image i posted it on my telegram and you may check out my last video with this event but on their media sources russians turned their defeat into the victory saying that Leopards couldn't dream about it. Bradley punched a Russian tank for 10 minutes and lost. I wonder where they actually found this information that Bradley lost. The Russian T-90M tank showed miracles of survivability. And again they say that American made Bradley lost the battle and they put leopard to over here somehow not even the word that the russian tank was totally annihilated and their crew have to leave the severely damaged machine the russian propaganda works well as usual but what also works well for the russian federation yes TikTok Kadyrov's army. So here we have the brave Ahmad warriors and they fire somewhere into the bushes as usual, fighting with the snowflakes. As you can see the area is open like in a shooting range and also there is the mist in the front, I would say even fog. So what are they aiming for? Well actually they show this picture with a big building, for me it was hard to identify. Clearly it was a montage and here I am just laughing, the guy with the machine gun and the other guy with the bullets and the fire somewhere straight. And later on they say how brave they are, how they hit everything. By the way, you shouldn't wear the winter camouflage like that, the coat should be on top of this vest. So the cover should be at least two sizes larger than your regular fit. So this is the example for the Ahmad soldiers of how to wear the winter masking suit. No worries guys, they will continue to wear their vests on top of that because it looks more brutal. It is always funny to watch the videos from the TikTok Ahmad battalion. And yes, still they have some of the losses, but they operate behind the front lines. So the Ukrainian side may only reach them with the help of the drone or artillery. Ukraine now suffers with some of the maintenance issues. Some of the maintenance could be done just directly on the front lines. Here our guy works with Bradley infantry unit. The similar stuff we have with the Leopard 2 tanks. They suffer damages, as you may see, directly to the barrel and those wheels weren't out a little, so this maintenance is now impossible to do on the front lines. Our guys might just change the caterpillars or some of the filters and that's it. In Ukraine we do not have the maintenance facilities for those kind of the tanks, so usually they go to Poland or Lithuania for the heavy maintenance and our crew here prepares the tank for delivery to Lithuania. Unfortunately, it takes lots of the time and lots of the paperwork to deliver it over there hundreds kilometers away from the front lines. Also the repair itself takes time and delivery back as well, so it means that the logistics for the Leopard 2 tanks is very long. If we had around 200 of those tanks in our army, it wouldn't be such a big issue, but we have around 70 up to 80, some say. Today Ukraine tried to launch the attack on St. Petersburg Big Oil Reservoir. Some of the drones were spotted in the night skies of St. Petersburg. So here we go with the drone. This video was shared on many of the Russian sources. Presumably this was the aim of the Ukrainian drone attack, but unfortunately drones were intercepted by the Russian electronic warfare and hit the ground somewhere. Let's go back to the map for a moment because there are some of the changes. For example, near to Vesela, Russia propelled forward. They reported that they took this village 
it's a tiny little village but still they say that they've took it under control on this map we see that half of the village still belongs to ukraine it is located in the gray area where the fighting is ongoing in any case i don't think that russian forces were able to cross this river but at the same time ukraine pushed russians in this place so let's go to yesterday and it is today i would say the advancement of ukrainian army even more compared to the russian side it all happens on the northeast part from solidar and very close to avdivka russia took some of the ground in industrial area so it was yesterday and it is today you can see hardly some of the changes well maybe the gray area expanded a little so it is the attack for the russian assault towards this place they want to have it under their control it is already avdivka town so they're very very close but at the same time ukraine continued to strike the russian forces and they're hardly able to send some of the vehicles behind this road so it's no go territory for them yet with their main forces but nevertheless they try to attack avdivka i would say it's one of the most vulnerable directions for ukraine to secure but in general russians do not have any sort of the success in avdivka direction well according to the other data russia tries to offense from this place near to Pisky. we have this information from the Mykosk 73 so indeed russia took some of the ground using infantry artillery and tanks again tiny little changes around the front lines russia even stopped their assault attempts in the points where they were very determined before for example in kupansk region with all of those failed russian attacks on sinkivka finally they stopped the advancement and for several days i haven't heard any news from this village and again let's go to the battle video so this is the russian tank which was attacking ukrainian army in avdivka direction this is the cemetery of the russian vehicles not far away from the industrial factory you may spot the railroad in this place and also the russian tank burning get some warm guys our guys are complaining that russians do not clean their weaponry so the trophy rifles are in a very bad state i would say that not all of the russians behave like that with their weaponry because their lives depends on the condition of the weaponry so i think that this particular rifle was trophied from the storm z battalion or even from the mobilized russian soldier who was civilian in his previous life and do not understand or in this case didn't understand the importance of cleaning the weaponry russia started to use a huge missiles to target ukrainian infrastructure this is a four-ton anti-ship cruise missile p-32 which was made in the 60s luckily it was caputed by ukrainian air defense this big russian missile has been launched from this starter unit indeed it is huge the belgrade people's republic again the local power station went on fire the last night spectacular scene maybe ahmad battalion should use it in their effects again i guess i know who is responsible for that we have the information coming from our allies that they will conduct one of the biggest military drills in a few decades organizing 90,000 troops for this scenario i would say that nato is up to take it seriously putin definitely stuck in ukraine but it doesn't mean that he has no plans for other countries especially then those countries are not ready for the russian attacks so we need to be ready for any kind of scenario all right there should be some of the movement with the military help from the united states to ukraine at least we have the article about it from the wall street journal that joe biden thinks to strengthen the immigration policy in the united states so to make a deal with republicans he does it especially to help ukraine but also as the wall street journal says to increase his own rating because immigration stricken policy somehow is kind of popular in the united states but france is already here with its military support of ukrainian army they'll send many of those a25m guided bombs with a range up to 70 kilometers they have several of the modifications from 125 kilos to one ton heavy bomb even though the maximum range of the bomb is 70 kilometers but in that case 
it should be dropped from the 15,000 meters, which is very high. French specialists say that they will adapt those bombs on the Soviet-made aircraft, as they did with the Storm Shadow or Scalp cruise missiles, which now being carried by Suhoi-24 with a special adapter. This is how the French-made Rafale of Qatar Air Force looks like with those bombs. So it may carry lots of them and each month Ukraine will obtain 50 of those units. Which I wouldn't say a really huge deal judging on the scale of this war. We need hundreds of them, but still we are grateful for any help. So France, thank you so much. Also our French friends will produce 78 of the Caesar units, very precise state-of-art artillery systems. The European Parliament voted for the resolution that condemns the actions of the Hungary, which constantly disregard the democratic values. There will be no any new sanctions applied on Hungary because of that, but it shows the political will of the European Union to get rid of Orban's manipulations or even blackmail. And we see the reaction from Hungary, they are willing now to leave the veto on the help for Ukraine. One more civilian ship was attacked in the Red Sea by Houthis. This time it is a bulk carrier Gensa Picardi owned by the United States and sailing under the flag of Marshall Islands in the Gulf of Aden. You may see the damages, those are not critical, the drone hit the base of the ship and also the upper part of this construction. This ship continued its move towards destination. Because of that, the United States Army launched one more attack on Houthi military facilities. The United States with its allies have already destroyed around one-third of all of the Houthi military infrastructure. This result was reached just after four of the main attacks on Houthis. About the situation in Bashkirkistan, well, unfortunately, the main leader of this event was arrested and even jailed for four years in prison. Here he was convoyed from the court for facility and will go for the jail. The Russian police forces also arrested some of the protesters, around 10 of them, and they will have just 15 days in prison. So probably it is the end for now. But it is just a start. There will be more situations like that inside the Russian Federation in the nearby future. So Russia finally will collapse. It is unable to stay as the single country. My friends, don't forget to press a big like to this video. By doing so, you help me a lot. And if you want to support my job, there will be some of the links in the video description just below. Special thanks for my Patreon supporters and the sponsors of my YouTube channel. Guys, you are awesome. Thank you so much for your kind support. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.